everyone. Welcome to Walk the Talk with Balbir. And today I am with Kiran Shetty, who is an architect and interior designer. Thank you so much. No sweat. So I just want to know from you to begin with, when did you start? Oh, that's really long back. But uh, you actually know when I started my architectural career. Yeah. Okay, I became an architect by the by eighty seven. I was an architect. Okay. And uh, yeah, so that's actually pretty long way. And when you start the and... So I I immediately joined uh, Talati Pantiki. Okay. And uh, then I left as an associate from there, approximately around I think ninety one, ninety two, okay. ninety two. And we were only three associates at that time. Okay. And uh, yeah, and uh, since then I have my own firm. And who is your role model, if I may ask? Uh, see, frankly, I, I like anyone who details well. So I mean, if you ask it can internationally, be no, internationally, the person who's actually influenced almost, I would think, uh, majority of architects in the world is Frank Lloyd Wright. I mean, for me, I was actually a fascinated, stroke obsessed with his entire uh, being and the, the the what he represented, not only from his actual design. I don't like some of his designs. I'll be okay. very honest. But what he actually, uh, how he kind of cut through the system with his assertion of design and how he changed the genre of design, like, you know, like he, he kind of a, was a kind of a milestone in our uh, profession. Okay. And he took it on like, you know, with, I mean, a lot of bravery, I would say. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, and his uh, buildings are still a testament to that. I mean, they're still there, mm -hmm. you know, and... Uh, and again, his sense of detailing was absolutely marvelous. I mean, I mean, some of his buildings are like almost, it's impossible to fathom that it was done at the time it was done. To name a few? The, one of the most famous is Falling Waters, you know, so it's like the, even the way it's designed now and if you see it, it could be just have been designed by anyone, okay. even now. And it must have been what made in the probably 50s, 60s or something. Or yeah. Probably some, somewhere around that time. It still looks different. Oh, yeah. It's like if you photograph, I mean, I'm sure because of because of period of time and everything, it could have uh, there could be certain. But if you just take a photograph of it as a design and certain portions of the insides and everything, it's like the concept and the uh, the way the design was approached is could have been your brief to me today. You know, it's as simple as that. Yeah, what is your favorite style of design? Yeah, so I don't specifically have a given style. Like, for example, I would love to think and assume that any project done by me, people won't know it's done by me. Because I, 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 I'm not, I'm quite against the fact that, you know, when you enter a particular space and some, you know, it's like a signature style. Because the signature style should be of the client who's given you the brief. Correct. Because at the end, they're going to stay there. And they should feel comfortable. It's not like, you know, you're getting up and otherwise you'll, it's like being in a hotel room. So whether it's the artwork or the ashtray or the photo frame, you all that adds to the other physical, the services of the, you know, the whole technical aspect of design. And uh, every material and everything, because otherwise there's a lot of repetition in uh, design, which you may have noticed. I mean, you know, there's a kind of a, and but would you like that? I mean, would you like someone coming and telling, oh, this is that made by him? Like, you know, it's like you would want to know, okay, this is like how much of Balbir is there in your space. Correct. And that's what our expertise should be. It's to enhance your brief and make it come alive in ways that you would never even imagine. And probably I'm not even talking from a, you know, uh, extraordinary thing or something. It's just the uh, kind of the, the approach which you may not have thought Got of. It, yeah. So when it comes to detailing in design in your projects, so how much so importance? I'm, I'm uh, hardcore into detailing. I mean, I'm like a... The minimalistic call, things what also. All a kida. <laughs> I have got that because I, I like to go deep in and then come out with the... Because I could start with the entire detail and probably could end up using that all around the house unknowingly. But I need that to kickstart the process, the design process. That's why I always start with the door. When I, in any, this thing, I kind of get into the 
door you know you imagine everything what you what do you feel the whole mm-hmm. feel of the whole space according to the brief that the client has given and then i narrow down into one specific item which is the door okay. so now i detail the door and then i go outward again and then automatically i know exactly what's going to happen so the door from the outside or the inside it's just the detailing of the door okay once i know what the door represents because then it's like you almost inside. it's like me entering my own mind <laughs> So it's it's uh, weird. So that's what. So basically, yeah. you that's design the door, yeah. and that's I, the I may not even end up doing the actual hundred percent design. But once I know conceptually, this is the way I'm going. Like this is the detail of the door, the the jam line, the frame. Once I know that, then I know that itself how I build up or build down from that detail. Because depending on the hierarchy of that particular item Got that it. has been chosen. Like because if it's if it's a that's a lot of detail. If it's no, if it's like a bedroom door, I would then obviously uh, enhance that thing for the main door. Okay. Or I would tone it down if I've already worked on the main door. So basically, you're talking about every door of the house, or yeah, just the no, main. No, I'm not. I'm not talking only the doors. Not no, no, no. I mean the beginning. So that detail now spreads across. I automatically know the. I I understand the concept that I'm going to work on. You know, like whether I'm going into a particular, the hard surfaces, soft surfaces. I don't know. It's just a process of. Uh, it's just that I need a starting point, right? So that's mm. my starting point. So then, when we, when you know, when you actually start on that detail, what about the functionality, well, aesthetic, aesthetic? It's super. No, I, I, to be honest, for me, aesthetics is like the last chapter of the book because that's the easiest part because the plan. Is the most important and the most difficult because that's it's like you should be able to move yeah. around blindfolded in your own house. Correct. Because oh my god, I can, I actually am imagining myself yeah. doing that. Because really, that's because your comfort, comfort yeah, level, right? Because exactly. In the middle of the night, you're getting up. I mean, I mean. Oh my god, is, this is. But the thing is, but you could actually be in a situation where it's almost being blindfolded, yeah. right? If the electricity is gone for whatever reason, yeah. and you're just walking around, you don't want to be stumbling around all over the place. The the simplicity of the plan i mean I, i personally feel that people unnecessarily make things more complicated, complicated. and it's not it, the most difficult is to make it simple and to look not designed so the thing so, is so you start from that simplicity of planning and i raise the lines from the plan and that elevation could be any damn thing it could you could be make it classical you could make it contemporary you could make it modern you could do anything with it but the plan has to be i'm not going to make a stupid so, plan because the genre is different so what do you, what do you like doing more like you know those uh, modern homes or classic oh, no, so or I, temp- like I said, contemporary i mean i'm not a natural class uh, period style classical kind of uh, thought process i love uh clean lines but i don't i hate a uh, boring clean lines in a sense i like that sense of pop to come in i like a sense of because it's like life right if you have to have speed breakers yeah but h- how does that breakers. uh pop come up like yeah, what it could come with the art talk it would come color. with the color it could come with the anything or breaking the genre i love mm-hmm. breaking genres i mean why okay. should it just continue in okay. one uh, uh, style mhm It is. It has to be like you. I mean, the, what's the concept of a suit, right? What, what does a tie do? The tie and your know, a, a pocket, a pocket square. square. I mean, there's a reason. The, what does a sock do? Or a lack of socks? You know. So that's what the whole uh, idea yes. is, right? So the thing is, why should everything? That's why, as much as I love uh, uh, Scandinavian and Japanese design, I think Japanese design is very spiritual. You know, it's beautiful to look at, but. I just feel it just represents them too much because they're an extremely both the societies are an extremely cold society, so okay. it works in okay. their system. So it's a it's a fab place to start from because it totally you read it so beautifully and it's so clean and neat and everything. But then they already have that sense of spirituality in them, so therefore they fill up that void. you know when they design that way now our sensibility is different now for us we ha- also have to create spaces which mentally you should be able to because you don't think japanese right you don't okay. think scandinavian so yes. suddenly for you sometimes it could be just an empty space now if you are into that whole uh, buddhist space all that kind of thing and then suddenly even that void you fill it up with all your thoughts hmm. and you know exactly why the void is there but so i like to see it purely on a visual way in a in a visual way and uh, then i like to 
I mean, because I just love that uh, concept of design. But then you have to do something with it. So you said break the genre. So yeah. you know, if you so just a style, you have to. I mean, so then it then that's where your personality comes in. That's where my personality would come in. That's where your personality would come, and how the thing gets interwoven. Because if that doesn't happen, how does uh, design? I mean, how does it kind of look different from something else? Right? Because there's no reason for someone else to like it. Correct. That's the least of my problem. If you don't like it, that's your problem. <laughs> But the person who's using it likes it. Have I followed the brief? That is the most important thing. Like I had a talk the other day and that's exactly what I was trying to say to people is that we are taking ourselves too seriously from a point of view of like, we are not artisans. We are not artists in the true sense, like a fine art uh, character. We are following a brief. Our job is to make your brief come alive in ways that you wouldn't imagine. Some probably someone else also wouldn't mind, but that doesn't mean someone else will like it because aesthetics is something else. You just may not like some things. I mean, so there is no hard and fix, there's no rule, right? That this is what, uh, and some things you may like 10 years later, and suddenly you see the same thing and say, Wow, it's actually really, and probably you may suddenly you've never seen it in uh, twilight, you've seen it in the day, and suddenly you see the same object in twilight and you say, and so then you suddenly realize why the thing is so good. Okay, one last question. So when it comes to uh, any project to do, you know, like an international project, what are, what is your take on international projects? No, see, the uh, international projects, basically what I love about international projects is the form of public uh, spaces, you know, mm-hmm. the, the way they handle public spaces. I'm not a big fan of just individual structures or anything because again, it's just a kind of, uh, it's there, you know, but what I really enjoy of the way uh, international projects are done for, you know, your where they involve streetscape, where they involve, like I recently saw a fab uh, uh, project uh, I thought was, uh, it's like a kind of a bathhouse in somewhere in Norway, if I'm not mistaken. And it was an old uh, concept and it was there from since the 50s or 60s, something like that. And it's just an interactive space for people to come and hang out in a kind of a waterfront. Okay. And the way the thing has been designed, it's designed by a firm called Snoheta, I think. And uh, the way it kind of, when you see the photograph, it almost feels like it's the, it's a sea. It's the waves and the various levels. It's actually just various levels and people are just sitting and they're looking oh. at the sea and there's a bathhouse where you actually can go in to swim and, you know, sea swim. And you've got your levels to dive into the water and everything. Mm-hmm. So it's all just incorporated, but it's accessible. And it's not like there's no kind of a boundary wall and there's no, you know, that this is a property and you need, you know, ABC to get in and all that. Is kind that of. man-made or? Totally man-made. Totally. But the way yeah. they've used, I mean, allowed it to kind of seamlessly fit into mm-hmm. the. Uh, Very artistically. It's and... not. See, the art is missing. Oh. That's the beautiful part, right? Because see, when you. Uh, when you really push art and place it in a space, that's your like how your traditional classical architecture mm-hmm. was, you know, because yeah. it's like a, it's like an alien thing which has been just dumped into a beautiful meadow or a, you know valley or wherever, or if it's a fort, it's up in the mountains. This approach is where you just make it beautifully seamless, and it looks like part of the terrain, part of the landscape, part of the contours of that particular space. So here it's just land meeting water. That's it. That is the actual brief. (laughs) And they've made it so seamless. It's absolutely stunning. I'm going to take these details from you later (laughs) because it sounds very interesting. And I don't even think it's an expensive or some fancy project or something, but it just so beautifully works. Lovely. What about ASTEC? What do you think about ASTEC? Can you tell us something about... What yeah, your so, thoughts on uh, East Tech are? It's, it's fact. The fact that, uh, you know, uh, what happens is like a lot of offices like us, obviously material comes to us. You know, so every vendor invariably over a period of time, he gets to know you. So he sends you catalogs, samples. Obviously, everyone doesn't have that uh, bandwidth with uh, vendors and with products. And uh, so... And the number of people have totally increased, right, who are designers. And uh, it's fab that they get a kind of a space to uh, 
you know, walk around and uh, see stuff. And mm -hmm. probably, I've always felt that probably your are too large. Okay. So I think you should kind of uh, uh, slightly kind of tone it down or maybe get a little bit more focused so that it makes life simpler for the designer also. Sometimes, you know, you need to tap things into place. You keep it, it's like, you know, it shouldn't be, uh, like, that's one of the reasons why I uh, never uh, uh, gone to Milan Fair with a client. Because it's like, it's like sent, uh, making them enter a Toys R Us. You know, they'll just want every toy. <laughs> so, they'll get so confused, right? Yeah. So, sometimes you need to, you know, focus all those, uh, whether it's people or designers or whatever. So, when they enter such a large space... They could, and probably you could even break it up. I don't know. I'm, I'm just throwing the ideas. Probably, you know, it could be a material expo. It could be a surfaces expo. It could be a <coughs> soft furnishing expo. Like how they have abroad, you know, for specific. Yeah, we do have yeah. halls, you know, who are, which are specifically for. Yeah. So what happens is then you, you know, if I know, for example, this particular thing, uh, uh, expo is only for fabrics. And only for probably wallpapers and carpets and you know that kind of stuff. So you know exactly, and that one particular probably two three people who look out for that in your office, and probably you yourself, and probably your stylist or someone. So you go with that kind of thing. You're not kind of distracted by suddenly say someone showing you because see once you enter, then you have to you end up going. So suddenly there's one guy who's go selling geezers is calling you, one guy who's selling switches is calling you, one guy who's, you know. They're calling you because of no, who no, so, you but are. What, but what happens is, uh, there is only so much time you can spend there, right? Yeah. So, the reason why I'm saying is, if it can be broken up, I think, it can, it becomes more uh, specific from a point of view. Because see, at the end, it's the same thing that you're achieving. It's just that you've broken it up into, say, probably three components or whatever. Yeah, honestly, we have done that. Hmm. To be very honest, we've got halls which are for surfaces, for ceramic, uh, for ceramics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's bath and kitchen hmm. in one hmm. area. But it's all uh, uh, at the same time. Yeah, they yeah. are in, uh, yeah. at no, a I'm step. Saying, I'm saying to you, make different to make shows, it, yeah, different yeah, time. and make it smaller and tighter. No? <laughs> Say, for example, I mean, like how you have some of the stuff happening at Geo, like right. So if you yeah. have it smaller, then automatically it gets more. So we are we are working on. I see. It's also the infrastructure that yeah. you know in India. No, no, I India. get it. I get it. So but I'm in fact this... reducing your headache. I'm saying <laughs> make it smaller, <laughs> and uh, so that it's just more. Uh, because why would you want someone to come and not go to those mm. two three places? Get it so that mm. you know. And uh, so they come dedicated, knowing, okay, this is a bang. But the stuff. reason to have it over four days is that people get because. Yeah, but to be honest, see, again, it's Bombay, right? It's a northwest, I mean, uh, north south situation. Yeah. If a guy from the uh, this side of, side of town thinks 10 times before, okay, I will go, there's so much traffic, I will reach there. So that means that whole day is gone. <laughs> so then now, will he yeah, repeat but... it again the next day? Now, cool. that's the whole issue, right? Because in, in overall, reality, to go through your entire space, I I will, I would have require three days at least, minimum. So, overall, what do you have to say about ASTEC? No, it's it's absolutely fab. It's I, I'm a totally for it uh, person, like, you know, because you have to, because at the end, where do we get to see uh, kind of newer and newer products, which are being, there's only so many people that can come and meet you or you can come across. And uh, once you go there, you at least get to see all the various uh, aspects of it. Yeah. True. And I don't know whether, I mean, how much of it happens out here, whether every year, whether products come out with the vendors. I guess many of them do now almost seasonally come out, you know, so that, so that every time we go there, that we see something new, which we've not kind of seen. And they say, wow, you know, so we tell our guys to, you know, take all the catalogs and get the details. That so religiously happens yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I've done that. And and, we, and uh, I've uh, seen stuff new there also, from which I followed up and done that. And I realized, so, and frankly, in ASTEC, you actually realize the system that you realize that, okay, this whole new approach is happening, say with ceramics, you suddenly realize that all the guys are following up a particular thing. And that normally starts with ASTEC because that's where they all, since it's the largest thing, they start moving. So you realize, okay, the trend is going towards that direction now. So everyone's following that format. 
Yeah, it's so, it's very helpful for sure. Thank you, and thank you for your time today. No, 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 I really appreciate it. <laughs>